Welcome to Anchors of Truth, live from the 3ABN Worship Center, the Unclean Spirit Series with John Lomacang. When I was growing up, I used to be particularly proud of stars, basketball stars, television, radio, movie stars, who wore crosses around their neck. And um, I'd always look for that cross, and I would feel so comfortable with them wearing a cross around their neck. And they would give honor to God, and some would point to the sky as they got their Oscar or their Emmy or their Tony or their MVP award, and they would give honor to God. Then I found out that every God is not God. And sometimes the God that they were giving honor to was not my God. Uh, the name God... I found out is not really a name for God. It is more like a title, uh, like pastor or doctor. It's not a personal name like Yahweh or it's Jewish euphemism Adonai. Or in the New Testament, you have Jesus, but his office is or his title is Christ or Emmanuel or Messiah. Those aren't names per se. They're, they're, they're more titles. And so God, as we know, it is not really a name for Jehovah. It's a, it's a title. It's an, it's an office. And the problem is, when you, when you just throw out the name God, there's always a theology that goes with that, that title. How to reach him, how to talk to him, what he wants you to do, how he wants you to live. Our God, Jesus said, no man cometh to my Father but by me. That's the theology of Jehovah God. But all of the other gods have different theologies. And so when someone is praising God, you've got to ask them, what God? Because every God ain't God. There are many gods and many ways to reach God. And I'm so very, very happy and glad and excited that Pastor Lo McCang is, is walking us through this because there is a maze out there, a web out there of deceit that Satan is spinning that has caught so many, many people in its trap. And he is demystifying, demythologizing God and, 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 and Satan and the things that he is trying to do. So we are very, very pleased. I am both pleased and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our third night in this series as we talk about unclean spirits and try to unmask some of the tricks of the devil. Our presenter is, of course, our pastor and our friend, John Lomacang, and he has been doing a fine job, and we've been getting reports really from around the country, across the globe, um, of, of the necessity of this kind of presentation in these last days, particularly for our young people. Some of us who are a little bit older um, uh, don't have uh, the music hang-ups that some people do, but uh, Satan has weaved its way into our church and into our lives also, and this is something that we need. So we, we pray that you have pen and paper out along with your Bible, that you are taking notes. If you cannot take notes, then get the CD or the DVD, because this is something you will want to refer to again and again and again. Before we call Pastor Lomakang forward for tonight's uh, presentation, would you join me in a word of prayer? Father God, we just praise you and thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We are happy, Lord, to know that we are not alone in this world. We are not left subject to the slings and arrows of the evil one, but we have a God who fights for us, who fights in us, who fights through us, and who has guaranteed us victory in Jesus Christ. We, like Paul, praise you who always gives us the victory, you say in Corinthians, through Jesus Christ. Now, Father, help us to walk in that victory. Teach us this night those things that you would have us to know, and then give us the strength, the grace to do them, for it is in the doing that we are made like Jesus Christ. We love you, we praise you, and thank you for your promise to hear and answer the prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pastor Loman King. Thank you, Pastor C.A. Good evening, everyone. And I would also say happy Sabbath. And uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, I was hoping today would have been a lot warmer than it ended up being. I was hearing that it was going to be in the 70s, but somehow... The saying goes in the Midwest, if you don't like the weather, just wait a few minutes and it will change. And it did, but we're glad that it did not prevent you from coming tonight. And thank you for those of you who have been tuning in from night to night. I want to begin tonight with an apology. I 
need another week. I need another five days, at least, because what I've discovered, as I said, and I really have discovered this is true, this topic is so in-depth that I fear that there are a lot of questions that are going to be raised that people are going to say, well, how come he didn't cover that? And I also said earlier this week that tonight was going to be the heaviest message until I prepared tomorrow mornings. And then I thought, wow, Sabbath morning is going to be powerful until I worked on Sabbath afternoons. And even when I came up with the titles, I said to my wife, you know, all week I was pressured to give titles. Pastors always come up with titles after their message is done to find out the relevance of it because they could see what the title should be. So I just threw out some titles, you know, just make it the revealing, and then the next one, it didn't come from God, and the next one, mixed signals, and then the walk of fame, and then born again. But as I put the sermons together, I have discovered how relevant every one of those titles are. And uh, I thank the Lord for it. So praise the Lord for that. So tonight, I need every minute I can get. I'm going to ask the Lord to bless and invite your friends tomorrow morning at 11 Central Time and then 2 p.m. Central Time for the final presentation entitled Born Again. Let's bow our heads and ask for the Lord's leading. Gracious Father, thank you that you are always with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Tonight, Father, may your Holy Spirit once again empower me to communicate that will give you glory and honor. That will also open the eyes of many who at this moment may be caught in this very industry or may be innocent victims of the clandestine plan that Satan has for their lives. So make the message plain, I ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like you to go with me to our opening text for tonight. Every night I have a specific scripture. And this one is from a book that many of you read often from, the book Habakkuk. It's one of those hard-to-find minor prophets, Habakkuk. Habakkuk 2 and verse 2. This fits so wonderfully under the topic mixed signals. If you think about what Habakkuk says, it is the opposite of mixed signals. Habakkuk 2 and verse 2 reads as follows. Then the Lord answered me and said, let's read this one together. Are you ready? What did he say? Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. The Lord does not want there to be mixed signals in the last days. He wants the signals and the signs to be clear. I'm so glad that the signs of the coming of the Lord are not mixed. We know that Jesus is soon to come. The signs all foretell, as the songwriter said, that his moment is nearing. Praise God for clear signals. When I began to prepare for my driving test, my driver's license test for the very first time, there was a section in the booklet that I had to study, and it was about signals. And you know, I remember taking that test, and I thought I knew all the signals. As a matter of fact, as I began to look in the booklet, all of a sudden I remembered seeing those signals before. But the difference was, now that I've studied them, I know what they mean. But I must confess, after I took the test, I missed one signal. I think I mi mixed up a yield sign with a slow-moving sign on the back of a tractor that you'll only see in southern Illinois, so it didn't really apply to New York anyway. But I, I want to say I've also driven in other countries where the steering wheel, the, the stick shift is left, not right. The side of the road on which you drive is opposite. And many of the signals are also different. Just, I believe, a year ago, about maybe two years ago, my family, my wife's family, were all in England together, about eight of us or nine of us, and they put their lives in my hand as we rented a family van opposite stick shift, Donnie, opposite steering wheel, opposite side of the road, and I drove them all over England. And praise the Lord, didn't have a single accident, not even a close call. See, in my mind, the Lord has given me this ability to just to turn off the left and turn on the right, and turn off the right and turn on the left. But I've also heard of instances when I told a friend of mine when I came back, he said, I had a lot of friends that had done that and I lost some of them because they went over and just made one mistake. And do you know it? All it takes is one mistake. All it takes is to miss one signal 
and that could be the end of your life. There are people that I heard about that have stepped off the, off the curve in foreign countries and looked in the wrong direction. They weren't even driving and they lost their lives because they missed the signals. And now, in many of the countries, you go to the subway, for example, in England, there's a big line that says, mind the gap. And when you go in the street, it says, look in the other direction. The importance of signals cannot be overemphasized. And today, Satan has created a culture of mixed signals that are quite complex. People don't know what to look for. Messages are communicated through hand gestures and dance moves. Messages are concealed in song lyrics and in movie compositions. Messages are veiled in building art and in even architecture. Messages are sometimes dismissed because sometimes people can't fathom certain personalities being associated with such a clandestine operation, a clandestine movement. Sometimes I mention, do you know who's involved? And I mention it to people, I say, no, that can't be. But don't forget, I've said this two nights in a row, Satan is not going to allow anyone to be famous in his industry without making an agreement or having a contract with him. So everybody that wants to be famous, Satan does have conditions. But there's something else I learned putting this together. I've all of a sudden seen Bible text in different ways. For example, in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, I'm going to read portions of it, and it's going to be on the screen. Jesus gave a commission to his disciples that Satan has used for his commission. Follow me carefully. Look at what the Bible says. Matthew 28, verse 19. He says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Do you know the devil has the same commission. I want you to go and make disciples of all nations. But there's something else he wants his disciples to do. He says, teach the people of the world, teach the people of the church to observe all things that I have commanded you. So Satan wants disciples also. He's got angels working for him. They are in office of, offices of politics, in religion, they are in movies, and music, they are in videos, in children's books, they are in school systems, that's where there's such a fight, they are even in the church reinterpreting the principles of the Bible as it relates to marriage between a man and a woman. Satan has disciples everywhere. He has stitched the world into a worldwide network. And by the way, according to Revelation 16 verse 14, the demonic power is at its roots. Look at what John the Revelator says. Who are they that are behind this? For they are the spirits of who, friends? Demons. Demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Not just kings in political offices, but you've heard the phrase, king of rock and roll, king of country music. And a lot of people fight over those titles that identify them with things in the world. The only thing I want to be associated with is be a worshiper of the king of kings. Amen. There are a lot of kings. Make sure the one you follow can get you somewhere that is eternal. But you also discover, as I, as, I, as I continue to learn, and by the way, every now and then I'd stop, and, and I, I shared this with my wife, and, and she shared this with my brother-in-law, and he said, and I want you to understand what I mean. You know, I have discovered that I have had so much, so much difficulty typing. Not that I can't type. I can type very fast. I have discovered uh, sometimes adding additional ends to a word like ism, ism, and I look back and I say, well, I don't remember writing that. And I pause and I say, Lord, control my fingers. And then I finish a presentation and all of a sudden I'm about to give that, put it on the memory stick to bring it over to the guys on the truck. And I want to say, praise the Lord for the crew that 3ABN has. Can you say amen to that? I, I thank the Lord for the directors and the people behind the cameras. And, and in particular, I thank the Lord for Will Wharf. I just want to say that publicly because I said, now, Will, who's going to be on this graphic? Not that others can't do it. But Will has been there in the trenches with me, and I praise God for his, his, his detail, his eye to detail. When I mention the text, I know it's going to be on the screen. If I've done my work, he always does his work. But you know, Alistair Crowley did his work. 
Aleister Crowley was one of Satan's greatest disciples. His teachings have permeated every facet of the entertainment industry. Music, movies, entertainment, just to name a few. But in order for Satan to gain access to this industry and gain more disciples, he also created the most alluring, the most seductive, the most intoxicating, as well as the most imperceptible signals. You know, sometimes you meet people, and uh, somebody once said to me, did you know that that guy was a mason? And I said, well, how'd you know that? Well, the handshake he used, or the way he stood up. And I thought, well, ah, you're seeing things that are not even there, until I opened my eyes to some of these things, and I began to notice, ah, certain hand gestures, certain things people do, and I became more aware. You see, the thing that is most important about this topic is education. What's the word I use? Education. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. And we have done a disservice even in the Adventist church. We have spent so much time talking about the Catholic church, we forget that that's only one of the seven heads. Satan's got mysticism that he's been working through. Secularism he's been working through. Spiritualism he's been working through. Capitalism he's working through. He's got so many other avenues. We've been spending all our time not saying that what Rome has done. And the reason I'm saying this, I have a number of reasons. One of the reasons is most of my family is Catholic. And I love my family. They may be watching in the Virgin Islands. I love Catholic people. Some of the most ardent people that have joined our church are people that were raised in the Catholic Church. So we've got to stop beating up Catholics. We've got to make sure that they know that whatever they are not believing that's from God's Word is not just because they were raised in the Catholic Church, but because the church may not teach what God wants them to. But as far as the people are concerned, God has people everywhere. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So I focus myself on the message I believe that even if some of these popes will give their minds to the truth, they could turn around. I believe God can save anybody. But we spend so much time on things that, you know, everything in Revelation is about Catholicism. Truly, John was in AD 95, and he was under the reign of Catholicism at the time, or under the reign of Rome. But there are some things that in the last days are unveiling Satan's most deceptive artistic moves, and everything we see in the Bible, that's Rome. Well, Satan who is in the great controversy between Christ and him, is unveiled in the book of Revelation. So I said, well, let me see what Satan's up to. And when I began to study this, I discovered, Lord, have mercy. You mean all this time I didn't even know that? And I thought after 24 years of pastoring, I'd know a lot more. Well, we can all learn something. Educate, educate, educate. Well, notice this. This is something that really blew my mind because you know a lot of people are Christians but a lot of people are not wanting to be the chief of staff for Jesus. A lot of people are not a lot of people say I'm Christian but I don't want to be like like a like an extra Christian. I don't want to be like a mega Christian. Well listen to what Alistair Crowley said. This is amazing. He was interviewed about his allegiance with Satan and with the occult and look at what he said. I got the quote here. Look at what he said. He said, I was not content to just believe in Satan. I wanted to be his chief of staff. I don't want to just find out about Satan during Halloween. And by the way, that's one reason why Christians should never, ever associate with Halloween and anything pertaining to it. It's Satan's highest, darkest day of the year. Teach your children. Don't give them excuses. If they want candy, give them candy. But don't let them associate that day with anything good. After being associated with the OTO since his initiation in 1910, Alistair Crowley was officially elected in 1925 as the outer head of the order. That is, of the order of the OTO. But the question you have is, what is OTO? Look at the screen. OTO means Ordo Templi Orientis, or Order of the Temple of the East, or Order of the Oriental Templars. Let me break this down. What is a Templar? Templars 
were a Western Christian military order that during the 11, 12, and 1300s were endorsed by the Roman Catholic Church. It was through this order that they carry out many of their inquisitions to find out who was allegiant and who was not allegiant to Rome. They existed as Templars, and some of them went even higher as Knight Templars. You heard that before, the Knight Templars. I think there was a movie with, uh, oh, God's Cain, what God's name, the guy. Anyway, it didn't really matter right now, but there was a movie about uh, national security, uh, uh, Nicolas Cage, protecting the Constitution. He was, a, so to speak, a Knight Templar, and they are interwoven in society from generation to generation through the Freemason order. But they were there, and for 200 years, their allegiance from 1119 to 1314, they had their allegiance to the Pope. Here's a picture of the cross and the seal. Uh, one of the seals uh, that identify with the Templars, the Templar cross and the Templar seal. What color is the cross? What is the red, red cross? That's a, that's a common symbol today that stems from the Templars centuries ago. The red cross for the good of those that it at its functions for. The Red Cross today is to help all of those under its banner. It's a good thing. So the Templar, there's no problem with the Red Cross. Praise the Lord for that. But originally the OTO was intended, and this is something that was amazing, it was originally intended to be, to be modeled after Freemasonry. But when Aleister Crowley got a hold of it, the OTO was reorganized under something called the Law of Thelema. And its central religious principles were the philosophy of Philema, also known as do what thou wilt. That's what he taught. Do what thou wilt. Whatever you want to do, just do it. But he went further than that. He said, if you want to really do what you want to do, you need some help. You need an instructor. Let me recommend to you a satanic instructor. Let me find a way to assign to you one of the demons of hell to help you accomplish your worldly pursuits. And that's an understatement, by the way. When you, when you read, when you read and you see what this man was behind. He also believed that in 1904, a new aeon or new age of Horus began. And he also believed that it was his mission to replace every old ethical and religious system. In other words, from 1904 on, Aleister Crowley said, it's my job, and I'm going to find my way to do it. It is my job to tear down everything ethical, tear down everything religious. It's time to get rid of all those things that have to do with God and Jesus. The Bible has got to get put away. That's why today, if you, if you declare that you are a Christian on a talk show when they're talking about all these dark subjects, you get booed. Or people say, shut up. Sit down, you're old-fashioned. Well, brethren, I want to be old-fashioned. If old-fashioned means being godly, what do you say? People say, you're square. Well, you know what? Heaven is square. Four square. I'm ready to go to heaven. What do you say? So if somebody calls you square, be happy to be square. But I want to read the next statement to you because this is an amazing thing. He said that the OTO possessed a secret. I've got to go faster tonight. He said, the OTO is in possession of one supreme secret. The whole of its system is directed toward communicating to its members by progressively plain hints, this all-important instruction that is the all-important instruction about the secret. Have you heard that before? I could say this because this is common knowledge. Oprah has this thing. She's, she's pushing this instruction, this course on learning the secret. It's not a secret, so I could say it. But here's a picture of a graphic where you can buy the course on secrets that you see, uh, I believe to your right, buy the secret DVD, and then you see the seal to the left. And I use that seal because right behind the S is what letter? The O. The S is embedded in a seal that is in the shape of the O. The secret. The secret. But brethren, i got to say this. You see, God's got a secret. And if I want to know God's secret, God is going to reveal to me what his secrets are. Unless the secret is from God, I don't need to go searching for it. Matter of fact, Amos the prophet says, surely, what word did I say? 
Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Everything that we need to know, God will reveal to us through his word. But people nowadays want to know the secret. What's the secret that they're trying to reveal? I don't know. It's a secret. And you know what? I'm not going to go searching for the secret. But there's something else you ought to know. Look at this next graphic, the OTOUSA.org. And by the way, many people think that the OTO is something old. The OTO is in every state. But listen to what they say. In the rituals of these degrees, OTO seeks to instruct the individual by allegory and symbol in the profound mysteries of nature and thereby to assist each initiate in discovering his or her own true identity. In other words, we got to get you a demon and you have to have an experience with the demon to find out who you really are. Brethren, I don't need that. I just got to wake up in the morning to find out who I am. <laughs> we know who we are. But here's the question. Here's also a picture of the Grand Lodge. I just made reference to that a moment ago. You go to the OTO.org or OTO-USA.org and you'll discover in every state there's an OTO organization, all of them based on the principles of Thelema and the teachings of Alistair Crowley. It is a huge network. We have one right here in Carbondale. They're everywhere. Now, I don't want you to go searching about membership, but this is not something that's old hat. This is not 1700s and 1600 This is today. But how would this occult system make its way into mainline music? Look at these principles. Magic, from the book M-A-G-I-C-K, Libra Abba, book 4, 1994, Ordo Templi Orientis edition, page 639. They say, here's the methods, here are the symbols, here's what they will use. Let him learn to write backwards. Let him learn to walk backwards. Let him learn to listen to recordings reversed. Let him learn practice speaking backward. Let him learn to read backward. In other words, walking backward. That's why when Michael Jackson broke out doing the moonwalk, here's a graphic that shows you that, when he broke out doing the moonwalk, it was not just another dance move. You've got to look at this very carefully. It is one of the five methods of the OTO communication. He also used the Baphomet hand signal right there. Hung it right down. You'll see that in just a moment. I revealed it first through this one. He not only did the moonwalk, learning how to walk backward, but he declared his allegiance right away. As soon as he began the moonwalk, he tilted his hat and he went, boom, there it is. Most people just thought that was just a hand gesture, but you discover it's not just a hand gesture. He says, I'm out. He also displayed his allegiance to Aleister Crowley. He made it very clear, I'm connected. Look at this graphic. He surely showed the world. That's an album cover entitled Dangerous. Now, there are a lot of pictures on that album. As a matter of fact, people say you could spend hours and still not find out all the messages on it. But in the bottom, almost the center of that album, he has a picture of Aleister Crowley showing his allegiance to Aleister Crowley. His connection, the principles of this mad man, this man gone mad, who has given himself to the workings of Satan, he connected himself in allegiance. And I have not enough time, I could go on and talk about all the things that, that he did in gaining access and finding out about how to come up with his songs, but Michael Jackson did say most of the songs he sung, he didn't write. His inspiration came from unusual places. I'll talk about that another time. I've got to keep moving. But one of the earliest groups that had openly declared their allegiance to Aleister Crowley as one of the most famous groups of all times. Which one would that be, brethren? The Beatles. And, and when you think about their songs, when I find myself in time of trouble, they, sh they flash the hand signals too. You'll see just a moment ago, I have their picture just again. But they made it very, very clear. All of the principles of Aleister Crowley were implemented by this group. No wonder that 2010, November, I, I'm a Mac man. I, I, I go to the Apple website often. And there was an announcement on the Apple website, in two more days, in two more weeks, the unveiling, the reveal. And I'm wondering, what on earth is going to happen in two more weeks? What's going to happen in six more days? And I went to that website that particular day, and the great news was a picture of the Beatles. They were 
They were the proponents to reintroduce the Beatles and all their music to a new generation. Why? Because in interwoven and in their music are messages from the OTO, from the principles of Thelema, from the Satanistic order that Aleister Crowley put together himself. So when you say, when I find myself in time of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, Mother Mary, the Mary that I know in the Bible is dead. So if there's a Mary standing in front of you, that's an apparition, that's an evil spirit. And it's amazing that one of the songs that Charles Manson liked the most was written by the Beatles, Helter Skelter. How could that song inspire a madman like him to go on such a murdering spree? Because the messages in those songs were hidden, uncovered by people with a demonic connection to the very same source. The Beatles declared their allegiance also to Aleister Crowley by hiding his picture in plain sight on their Sgt. Pepper album. Let's look at that graphic. It's amazing. You see that again. It's so small, all these people on their album cover, you couldn't see it, but in the top left-hand corner of their album, and some of you may have that album. I don't want you to raise your hands, but if you've been around long enough to be raised in the Beatle area, chances are it's maybe tucked away somewhere. His picture is on their album cover too, in plain sight, but people didn't see that. People didn't even know that. There's something else that Aleister Crowley bought into that. The Beatles also embraced Aleister Crowley's belief in the afterlife. You know, these songs about Mother Mary coming to me. And um, the other one, a beautiful song. You remember that song, uh, Imagine? You know that song? Imagine there's no heaven, no hell below us, nothing to live or die for. Pushing this ideology of complete unity. Just forget all about life and the past and the future. Let's just all get together. Beautiful song. I used to love to play that on the piano until I realized what it was saying. But they declared their allegiance to Aleister Crowley again. And then they also, or Aleister Crowley also highlighted the OTO's connection with Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica. This is something you, not, you may not have heard before, but if you have, follow me. Also known as Gnostic Catholic Church. And the question is, is it connected to Catholicism? I'll answer that in just a moment. But why is the word Catholicism there or Catholic there at all? Catholic simply means universal. In other words, it was the aim of the OTO to closely pattern its ceremonies after the ceremonies of the Roman Catholic Church. They said, this is the most powerful church on earth. Let's do what they do. Let's follow their symbols. Let's pattern our practices after what they do so that we can gain the following. So now you may see why this message is called mixed signals. But follow me carefully. This order, Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica, was not developed until the 19th century. It descended from the French Gnostic revival churches. It was not until 1907, early 20th century, that the Gnostic Catholic Church was founded. And by the way, let me answer the question. It is not connected to the Roman Catholic Church. But notice how closely they associated what they do. You'll see this come alive in just a split second. Look at this. They have a Gnostic Mass, a ritual performed by an OTO bishop. They also have, they believe in the consecration of holy oil. They believe in exorcism. But I ask myself the question, can Satan cast out Satan? They also have a Eucharistic ceremony written by Aleister Crowley himself in 1913. They have saints. Their saints are mythological figures from old ancient Egypt mysticism. Those are their saints based around the religion of Thelema. But this is where it really gets deep. They also have doctrinal beliefs. You see, when we end our prayers with, in Jesus' name I pray, amen or amen, they end, and they end it with the, with the word, um. Have you heard that before? Um. Have you heard that before? Not U-M, but A-U-M. Um. So when they end their prayers, they end it with a sound. Um. We end it with amen. They end it with um. They're summoning the connection. They are, they are, they are. Uh, uh, confirming their connection to their deities. But it gets even deeper than that. They also establish their godhead. They have a godhead also, based on something called the Hebrew, Hebrew tetragrammaton. It's a big word simply meaning a word with four letters. Couldn't they find a simpler way to describe that? 
Tetragrammaton. What does that all mean? Sounds like a big old gigantic rocket. It's just a term meaning in English, a word with four letters. The four letters in Hebrew are the four letters that are used to spell the name Yehovah. Y H V H. The OTO took those four letters and they decided for every letter that is associated with Yehovah or Jehovah, they decided to create a deity. So they have four deities. They believe in God the Father, and this is amazing. When you meet people that say, oh, I believe in God the Father, look at this. They believe in God the Father, they call him Chaos. Their God's name is Chaos, that's their God the Father. They believe in God the Mother, her name is Babylon, and that's the way they spell it. I know how to spell Babylon. They believe in God the Son. In other words, they said when God the Father and God the Mother made a child, they had a son, and they call him Baphomet. Baphomet is a symbol for Satan. It is that satanic creature, that dual gender creature with two horns. And they also believe in the daughter. They also had a daughter. They said the daughter is the bride of Baphomet. And the bride of Baphomet, like the bride of Christ, is the church. They've got doctrinal beliefs that parallel everything that comes out of Christianity with the, with the exception of we don't believe in God the mother. Amen. But have you listened to lately people in Christian circles start saying Mother God and Father God? And there's some churches pushing this Mother God concept. Now I like women and I, I appreciate the fact that there are two genders, but the Bible does not describe God as a woman. Also, when we end our prayers and we say, we believe in the Son of God, they say, I believe in the Son of God too. We, be, we mean Jesus. They mean Baphomet. But the question is, what does Baphomet have to do with anything? Let's go on further. I'm going to break this egg open in a minute and fry it. Are you ready? Put your seatbelts on. I'm going to turn the page. During the 13th century, the Templars, this military order that was allegiant to the Pope, was also known to worship a heathen god named Baphomet. You see, they went to war with the sultans, and the sultans were connected to Mohammedism. And another word for Baphomet is Mahomet. So many people thought that they were misunderstanding how to pronounce the name Muhammad. And when you look at ancient literature, you see that Muhammad is also mentioned as Mahomet. So they just simply thought that they were praying to Baphomet for their success. So they started, as these Templars, praying for success so that Baphomet would give them victory as he gave to the Muslims. So they started praying to the same God. They started worshiping Baphomet, praying that he would give them what they wanted. But look at this sign. The Baphomet symbol is the most flashed hand gesture in the world today. This is Anton LaVey. Look at his right hand as it's sticking up. You can see that symbol there. That's Anton LaVey and his daughter. And they're standing, by the way, in the church of Satan. But let's keep going on. I'm going to have Will keep up with me. As I see the graphic show up, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Some people get confused because this hand gesture also mimics the hand gesture that deaf people use to communicate the message, I love you. You see that message, I love you? Deaf people say, I love you, that way. But Baphomet, they go that way. But people that don't know that, that are in this satanic industry, they go both ways. They say, this is Baphomet to them, that's Baphomet to them. So when you see it, when you see all these people going like this in concerts and all like that, and actors going all like that, they are not talking about, hello, I love you in, in, in deaf sign language. They are flashing the Baphomet symbol. Let's go on and make it very clear. Look at this next graphic. This is the Baphomet goat head. You notice that he has two horns. This is an amazing thing. You'll find out what I mean by that in a moment. He has two horns sticking up. That is the symbol. That's why the fingers are that way. So you look at television, sometimes people say, hey, give me the horns. That's what they mean. The goat's horns. That's what they're doing. And I don't even want to do that in the church. I shouldn't even do that, but I'm just illustrating that. I don't mean anything by it. Continuing, the Beatles show their allegiance right there with the Baphomet hand gestures. Now you understand what it's all about. Here's another graphic with uh, Michael Jackson and this now famous Justin Bieber. How did this young man all of a sudden get so famous? You'll find out tomorrow. He also has a programmer. I'll tell you who that is. A person that is, there's Rihanna uh, to your left. She has on the, uh, the assassin's hood and on every finger she has a, a skull or some type of satanic symbol. And then there's also Nicki Minaj. She's one of those personalities on MTV. I gotta know this. I don't watch MTV, but I've gotta be informed. 
There is the young lady Miley Cyrus uh, to the left, and Alicia Keys, one of the best pianists out there. Doesn't she look kind of like a, a coven witch? All in black, and she's not even flashing this. There's Kiefer Sutherland to the left, and there's Courtney Love and her daughter right there together. This is not something that they're doing ignorantly. There's Michael Blueble. And there's the guy called Snoop Dogg. People said to me, somebody sent an email and says, well, it's not D-O-G, it's D-O-G-G. -G. Well, no matter how you spell it, the connotation is the very same thing. What do you say? Amen. Whether you call me D-O-G-G -G or D-O-G, I'm neither. The Baphomet horns, hand, signal is often associated with hang loose. And this is not it. Don't get confused. When somebody go to Hawaii and say hang loose, that's not the Baphomet hand signal. Don't run and hide. Don't run for cover. That's not the same thing. It's far deeper than that. And by the way, I had to be sensitive on this area because I thought to myself, if I really wanted to show you how widely spread and how widely used that symbol is, you would see pictures of presidents, both Democrat and Republican. You would see national leaders all around the world. You see popular personalities of talk shows. You see people that you would look at and say, I don't believe that. Did you do that? Did you augment that hand? It is far and widespread. It's in political circles. It is in every office in our country, in our nation, and around the world. I even wish I had time to talk to you about Columbia. Why do we call Washington, D.C. the District of Columbia? That's something altogether. It's amazing. Every state, you'll find something associated with the name Columbia. That's something you could spend a few days on just finding out about that and what that has to do with the occult system. But there's something far deeper than that. What is the message of the goat horns? Because this doesn't really mean anything. I mean, if you do that, I mean, what's, is that innocent? It's not innocent. See, a lot of young people nowadays, they see their popular icons doing that, and they do that thinking they're being cool. Don't even do it. Because there's certain hand gestures, hand gestures that Christians wouldn't do. Am I telling you the truth? You know, there's certain things you wouldn't do, and there's certain fingers you should not be... Okay, I, I could stop right there. And even when you travel around the world, we learn as we travel what, what means peace to us in America doesn't mean peace overseas or in Brazil. Don't, don't go overseas and raise your hands or make funny finger gestures at all. And when you overseas, when you do the number one, they say always make sure that you're facing your palms this way. Don't ever turn your palms back this way and do the number one overseas. It's offensive. So we've got to make sure, but these hand gestures are not innocent. Look at this. According to blackcloset.com, this is, by the way, a, a website where you can get all this, all this uh, demonic paraphernalia. Listen to what they say. They describe it. They said about the goat horns, this is not an idol. It's a representation of harmony between two polarities. Baphomet points to the full and dark moon. The hand gestures express the perfect harmony between two opposite polarities. Is that an oxymoron or what? The dark moon represents our actions and our will to action towards our goals. The full moon represents the fulfillment of those goals. In other words, when somebody flashes that symbol that's in that entertainment successful industry, here's what they're saying to you. I have followed my will and I have fulfilled my will. That's why famous people do it. That's why wealthy musicians and people that are very uh, uh, rich do that. They're saying to you, I have followed my will and I fulfill my will. But knuckleheads nowadays walk around the street with their pants hanging down going, hey, you know, homie. They don't even know what they're doing. And the devil is laughing at them. The church has become a laughing stock out of ignorance. We shouldn't even do those things. But let me even go further than that. The Baphomet hand signal is not the only signal that is used in the entertainment industry to signal allegiance with the Lord of Darkness. The other signs flashed by musicians is the one eye, the 666, and the pyramid. Now why the one eye? Remember what Satan said, and here it is in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 5. He said to Eve, For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be what? Opened, and you will be like what? God knowing what? Good and evil. Look at this next graphic. Somebody that you may not need any description for. You may know who exactly who that is. I put the name just in case you didn't notice. That's Beyonce in her Sasha Fierce mode. That's her alter personality. A lot of these people in the industry, notice she's highlighting the eye, and she's also making the gesture of the number six. 
So look at this now. Look at me now. When you see this, to you that means, okay, but not to occultists. That's the number. That's the O of the six. And each finger represents one six, the second six, and the third six. So when they go like this, hey, they mean six, six, six. That's my allegiance. I'm allegiant to that deity. Here's Beyonce emphasizing that very clearly when she gives you the double sixes. She's not saying everything is just fine. She's saying six, 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 six. Allegiance. I've found my will. I've fulfilled my will. And the God who gives me strength is not the God you worship. It's a dark God altogether. And this is what our young people are listening to. This is what played on our college campuses. This is what parents allow their children to buy and play in their homes. And they say, oh, it's innocent. You think it's innocent. You don't grow out of evil. You grow into evil. Somebody ought to say amen to that. You don't grow out of bad. Your human nature is to lean in the wrong direction. But let me go even further because there's a program called American Idol. A few years ago, there was a young lady that won. Here's her picture now. You wonder whatever happened to her. Well, they were grooming her. This is her right there, Jordan Sparks. But don't run past that. She has not only one eye covered, but she has the triangle... And she has the O, the letter O. She got all three symbols. One eye, the triangle, and the letter O, which is associated with OTO. And then there's that famous rock star Bono. Is he obvious? I mean, there's nothing, nothing wrong with his eye. He's just trying to send that message. Let's go to the next graphic. Here's one. I don't know why they call her Lady Gaga. There's nothing ladylike about her. She's covering that eye. She also is covering a lightning bolt, which is another symbol for Satan. And there's a young man that's in a lot of movies. He's a, he's a personified rapper. His name is Ice Cube. Is that a clear message? Look at my eye. There it is. Those are the symbols that they flash in plain sight and people don't know. Here's another young lady called uh, Belinda. She's one of the cheetah girls. Disney... They have these four girls called the Cheetah Girls. See, Disney knows how to prime these young ladies. Then there's Fergie. She's one of the members of the group Black Eyed Peas. You know, they, they, they want to be like these young girls. So they go to Disney Channel and, and want to dance and dress like the Cheetah Girls. So they put them on those channels like they did to Britney Spears, like they did to Christine Aguilera, like they did to all those young icons. And I'll talk about Miley Cyrus a little later on. Matter of fact, I'll talk about her tomorrow. But they do all that so that, oh, you know, I want, I want to have my... I'm going to talk about Hannah Montana tomorrow. Hannah Montana is not from Montana. But Satan has so conditioned the minds of our people today that they don't even know that he's preparing them for the greatest deception of all time with these in-ear devices, these iPods. They should be titled differently, brain-destroying devices. They can either destroy your brain or enlighten you, depending on what you put in it. And you notice, they used to be very expensive, but now you can buy the smallest, tiniest little one with just a thousand songs on it. A thousand songs when it's rock music and the wrong kind of music is a lot of music, what do you say? Satan has made it so accessible. You have kids nowadays whose minds can't think, they can't function because they are so conditioned by what they've heard. Their minds have been assaulted for so long that they can't even think for themselves. Satan's been busy. That's why when I, I receive this challenge, here's another picture, I want to show you this one. This is an amazing one. Um, this is Jay-Z in concert. You see him there to the left. But look at the audience, thousands of people. Jay-Z's looking at them. He's doing this. He's looking at them. You can't see this. because He's looking at them with one eye through the pyramid, just like you see on the $1 bill, the sign of Satan's unfinished business. But the audience, thousands of them, they're flashing that signal back to him. We are with you. We are with you. And you know what? A rock artist, a rap artist, a hip-hop artist, a country artist, any secular artist can stand up in a stadium of 15 to 30,000 people, 60,000, 100,000, and they can say, everybody's screaming. You know what they do? They all scream. Everybody jump up. They all jump up. It's like they are under the control of a force, and the artist that's up front has the control mechanism. Because you know why? They've been listening to that artist's music. 
They've been listening to the lyrics. And while the artist is singing, they're down there mimicking the same thing. And by the way, you've got to stop and think what you're singing sometimes because you're saying stuff that you don't even stop and think about. And before you know it, what did I just say? What did I just say? Did I say that? Because the artist had you saying that. Whoever that artist may be, you buy their CDs, you learn their lyrics, you're on your way to church singing the wrong song. There's some people in our college campuses. Our pastors ought to get back to do what God has called them to do. Our schools ought to be places where young people go and find God, not where they go and lose God. Our churches ought to be the places where when they go to church on Sabbath morning, they know they're not going to leave weaker than they came. Stop trying to be like people that don't have the light that we have. Stop trying to be famous. Be faithful. There's another letter. There's another word. Don't be famous. Be faithful. God is calling for us to be faithful. And just in case you missed it, I want to read this quotation just one more time. All those things I showed you. Look at this quotation one more time. The OTO is in possession of one supreme secret. The whole of its system is directed toward, what's the next word? Communicating to its members by progressively plain hints this all-important instruction. In other words, are you on board? And they flash, are you on board? And you walk into stores and people go like that. Hey, hey. you walk into government offices, you got people go like that. They want to make sure you are on board. You walk into play, a police stops you and you flash a signal, he lets you go. They're on board. They're in every facet of society. They're everywhere, not just the music industry. It's an interwoven web of satanical, satanically driven deception. It's everywhere. But I don't want to end the sermon giving Satan the glory. I want to end it giving God the glory. I think we ought to always come back to Jesus. Do signs really have any lasting significance? To God it does. Four most important signs that God established, that Satan has attacked. The first one is the rainbow. When the flood was over, the Lord gave them a sign of a rainbow, and he said, whenever you see this sign, Genesis 9, verse 12 to 17, whenever you see this rainbow, it is a sign that I will never destroy the world by flood anymore. You know what Satan has done? He's taken the rainbow, and now it means homosexuality. It means gay and lesbian. We ought to take our rainbow back. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Return to the allegiance. Would you stand by and let somebody take the Sabbath from you? No. Christians stand around. We want to be politically correct. We don't want to be offensive. Well, the world is offending us. We ought to stand up for what's right. Not in an offensive way, in a loving way. I'm not talking about anarchy and warring against Satan. We cannot wrestle against flesh and blood. But we ought to stand on what is right. The second thing that Satan has attacked, the second sign, the Lord said the commandments is a sign. It should be a sign between your frontlets of your eyes. Right there, keep it in your mind. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 8, the Ten Commandments. Has Satan attacked that? Yes. He's deleted some. He's moved some around. He now says, remember to keep holy the, sab the Sabbath day so people can now pick which one it is. He's taken out 90 of the words of the fourth commandment. There are 98 words. He's taken 90 of them out. He's taken out the one, thou shalt not worship graven images, because there's a whole billion plus people that worship images. There's a third sign. The Sabbath. The Sabbath, the Lord says, Ezekiel 20, 20, it's a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord that sanctifies you. If you are a Christian and believe in creation, there is no other day that you should honor but the Sabbath from sunset Friday to sunset Saturday. That's a sign that as a Christian, you believe that God is your God, and it's not about the day. Here is the focal point of that commandment. He says, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. So the question is, like it is in the OTO, like it is in the music world, like it is in the entertainment world, who's your God? That's the message. Not what day it is. He's blinded them thinking it's about a day. It's about who's your God. If God is your God, he's already picked the day. Amen need to go out finding days. The Muslims do it on Friday. 
the rest of the Christian world on Sunday, and they said, well, that's, that's, you know, we modify that because it's more convenient. That's not no, there's no new Christian Sabbath. Anything that is Christian, there's only one Sabbath for it. That is, that is philosophy and vain deceit. That is deception. And these last days, I'm going to let the Lord use my voice to call people back to serving God according to the truth. Not according to what's convenient. It wasn't convenient to go to the cross. Which takes me to my last, most important sign. They're all important, equally important. But the last sign, the fourth sign, the fourth sign, Revelation 12, 12 says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. This sign was so important because this one fits perfectly into the topic, Pastor C. This fits in there. You know why? Because all of the OTO signs stem from ancient Egyptian mythology. But when the children of God were in the land of Egypt, the only way that they were spared from destruction when the destroying angel came through was they were covered by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That's the sign. The rainbow, the commandments, the Sabbath, the blood of the Lamb. And the next time, this world now has been taken over by ancient Egypt spirits, ancient Egyptian mythology, ancient Egyptian occultism. It's in every facet of society. That's why the Bible says in Revelation, the place where our God was crucified, and John the Revelator uses Sodom and Egypt. You, you, trace, you trace Sodom and Egypt in society today, and you'll find it everywhere. But brethren, the next time the destroying angel comes by, Tonight, I want to reaffirm my stand with the one who covers me by the best sign of all, the blood of the Lamb. I used to be in the music world. And every now and then, I find myself, oh, I remember that song, and God's got to pull me right back. God's got to pull me back center because this is the most important message. And tonight, if you're watching and you want to reaffirm your stand with God, I'm going to have you just simply say, Lord, I'm giving you my heart. I'm going to go through my music and video and audio collection and find out what doesn't honor you and get it out of my house. It's too late for mixed signals. Amen. Tomorrow morning, tonight was kind of concentrated, but tomorrow morning, I want you to bring an umbrella. The Holy Spirit's going to reign in here. Because I'm going to make it even clearer than tonight. And I want to give God all the glory. Friends, don't forget, invite somebody 11 a.m. Central Time to hear the message tomorrow morning. Be there. God bless you until we see you again.